at T minus three minutes and 10 seconds, you will hear the go for purge sequence four. That's a helium purge of the four core stage engines downstream of the propellant valve, getting the air and moisture out. GLS is go for part sequence four. And in just a few seconds, GLS will close the core stage locks vent, liquid oxygen. The white vapor cloud caused from the super cold gaseous oxygen condensing the water in the atmosphere will disappear. You see it coming out there now. And there it goes, it's closed. Locks vent closed, pressure rising in the core stage locks tank to flight levels. Coming up. In 15 seconds, look for that thrust vector control actuator test. Engines will gimbal. And there they go. The four core stage RS-25 engines gimbling around, testing the ability to steer the rocket into space. They will operate at 109% performance each RS-25 throwing down a half million pounds of thrust, all four, two million pounds, all together with the boosters, 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. GLS is good for upper stage to internal power. Now the upper stage has gone to internal power. So power is removed from the rocket's upper stage, the ICPS, and it's been switched to battery power. The same milestone is coming up for the core stage at T minus one minute and 30 seconds. GLS go for core stage to internal power. The rocket's core stage, which houses the three flight computers, is now on battery power. So there is no more hold time available because there's no more margin on the battery. So if we hold, have a hold, we'd have to recycle back to T minus 10 minutes and recharge those batteries. The count continues. A note now, shortly after liftoff. One minute. Shortly after liftoff, Mission Control Houston will take control of the rocket, and my colleague, Leah Cheshire, will take over commentary. T-minus 50 seconds and counting. Coming up at T-minus 33 seconds, the GLS will hand off control to the ALS. This is the autonomous launch sequencer on board the rocket. It will take over command and control of the rocket. But the ALS will check, make sure there's no holds coming from the ground up until T-minus GLS seconds. is go for ALS. And we are go for ALS. The Space Launch System is now counting down to liftoff of Orion on its maiden voyage to the moon. Launch team can no longer recycle the count. Sound suppressor water now flowing 15. under the ML. And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiated. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters and ignition. And liftoff of Artemis 1. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. All four RS-25 engines on the core stage and two solid rocket boosters now propelling the vehicle at 128 miles per hour. Hearing good Good control on the roll from teams in Mission Control Houston. All good calls so far. Now 30 seconds into the flight of Artemis 1. First milestone will be for the vehicle to pass through max Q at about 1 minute and 9 seconds into launch. This is the greatest period of atmospheric force on the rocket. SLS now traveling 607 miles per hour. Pounds of maximum thrust quiet here in the loops of mission control. Four core stage engines are throttling down ahead of pass on through max Q. Now one minute, 21 seconds into the flight, traveling at 1,420 miles per hour. 
The four core stage engines are back at maximum thrust. The next major milestone will be for the solid rocket boosters to cut off and jettison in about 2 minutes and 11 seconds into the flight, so about 30 seconds from now. Again, quiet here in Mission Control Houston as teams continue monitoring the flight of Artemis 1. We're now 16 miles downrange from the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center, traveling over 2,800 miles per hour. Standing by for solid rocket booster jettison and shortly thereafter. Confirmation that the solid rocket boosters have separated these 177 foot boosters. Now the core stage continues to power the flight of Orion, all four RS-25 engines firing, traveling over 3,400 miles per hour, 46 miles downrange. Two minutes and 36 seconds into the flight. Hearing nominal calls here in Mission Control Houston. We've still got four good engines on the core stage. Next up, we'll be looking for the service module fairing to separate. This is three 15 by 15 foot fairing panels, providing structural support, protecting the service module. Those will separate at about three minutes and 11 seconds into flight, and very shortly thereafter will be followed by the launch abort system separation. Just over three minutes into the flight of Artemis 1, now traveling over 4,060 miles per hour, 83 miles downrange. We just had confirmation that the service module fairing has separated. And that the launch abort system pyros have fired, separating those from Orion as well. For future crew members. We just heard the call for three engine press, meaning if SLS were to lose an engine at this point in the mission, we could still achieve a nominal mission. We would just have an extended main engine cutoff time. However, we still have four good engines all at maximum thrust right now, powering the first flight of Artemis at 5,200 miles per hour, 148 miles downrange. We're four minutes and 16 seconds into the flight of Artemis 1. So far, we've had a clean ascent. We saw those solid rocket boosters jettison about two minutes and 11 seconds after liftoff. Shortly after, we had the service module panels fairing separate, as well as the launch abort system. The launch abort system was inert for this flight, except to perform this separation. Those four core stage engines will continue to fire and power the flight of Artemis 1, now traveling over 6,800 miles per hour, 229 miles downrange. Booster flight controller reports that the engines are looking good. Our core stage main engine cutoff time is about eight minutes and three seconds. We are now at five minutes and 11 seconds into the flight, 7,656 7, miles per hour. Again, four good core stage engines, those four RS-25 engines. The last time those core stage engines flew, they were taking space shuttles to orbit, and now with upgraded capabilities, they're launching the future of human spaceflight. Five minutes, 42 seconds into the mission. We are now traveling 8,800 miles per hour, 345 miles downrange from the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center. Again, we are anticipating core stage main engine cutoff at about eight minutes and three seconds. And about 10 seconds later, we'll see core stage separation, at which point Orion and the interim cryogenic propulsion stage will be flying free. Now traveling over 10,000 miles per hour, six minutes and 15 seconds into the flight of Artemis 1, 427 miles downrange. Quiet here on the loops in Mission Control Houston. Teams continue to monitor this first flight.
about a minute and a half now until that core stage main engine cutoff time. Our four core stage engines continue to fire maximum thrust. Coming up on seven minutes since launch today, now traveling over 12,800 miles per hour, 563 miles downrange. Again, still quiet here in Mission Control, Houston. As we prepare for main engine cutoff, the four RS-25 engines are beginning to throttle down. Thirty seconds now until core stage main engine cutoff. All four engines continue to throttle down. Now seven minutes forty-five seconds into the flight, traveling over sixteen thousand miles per hour. Continuing to hear good calls here in Mission Control, Houston. We're standing by for core stage main engine cutoff. And we have confirmation of core stage main engine cutoff. Orion is now in Earth's orbit. The flight dynamics officer reports that we have a nominal main engine cutoff. And we just heard the call for core stage separation. That means Orion and the interim cryogenic propulsion stage are now flying free from the core stage of the space launch system. The next milestone will be solar array deploy approximately 18 minutes after liftoff. But before Orion stretches its wings, let's check back in with our friends at Kennedy Space Center and hear all about what it was like to hear the rocket roar off the launch pad. Megan and Kayla, I've got to hear all about it. <laughs> well, if you're just joining us, welcome to NASA's Kennedy Space Center where we just watched Artemis One launch, our first step towards our next adventure into deep space. As Leah said, I'm NASA's Megan Cruz, and this is NASA astronaut Kayla Barron. And I'm kind of still giddy and speechless. I don't even know how to explain how I'm feeling right now. I feel the same way. This is the first launch that I've been able to watch in person. And I've got to say, it was incredible. I was just, it took my breath away, and I was tearing up just what an, an amazing accomplishment for this team, this international team, people who have been dedicating their careers to getting this rocket off the ground and taking the first step to getting a crew on that vehicle back to the moon. It was just incredible. Yeah, it, this is a moment I think that we're all going to remember where we were when we saw this sort of thing, you know what I mean? And it was great to see, again, when we entered into terminal account, everybody here just started cheering, you know, coming out to get a really good view. And boy, I mean, it lit up the night sky and it just shook everything around us did you feel that like in my bones i felt that oh yeah the i mean the cool thing is just kind of the delay between what you see and yes. what you hear because of course the sound travels a little bit slower uh and it was just amazing the the ground shook we could hear the thrust pushing that rocket into space 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust yes it's incredible it yeah. was amazing to see here live in person how does it compare so this is your first launch on the ground how does it compare to your launch when you're in the capsule soaring towards space i mean equally emotional i think yeah. one th we train for everything and so when we're in that capsule waiting for launch we're just running our procedures you could almost you know trick us and say that we we're in the simulator and it wasn't real but like in that moment of liftoff when the thrust builds underneath you like we saw it today it's just hard not to be overwhelmed by the emotional experience, the excitement, the joy of that moment. It's incredible. Yeah, I, th I think we can't say it enough. This team really deserved this moment. They've been working so hard for this moment. When I heard that we got into terminal count, it was, <laughs> I felt a sense of relief and excitement for them that I, I think everybody here did. You know.